What's up, Limeheads? Thanks for checking out another video here at Long Island Music and Entertainment. And we are so excited to have our next guest uh, voice over for such iconic characters back in the 80s. Uh, let's go down the list here. The most famous for Lionel from Thundercats, which personally I was such a huge fan of. Uh, Count Chocula, uh, Sonny the Cuckoo Bird, among some of them. Uh, we have Mr. Larry Kenny joining us. Larry, thanks so much for taking time out and welcome to Long Island Music and Entertainment. Oh, thank you, Todd. It's great to be here with you. Hi, everybody. All right. So how you doing? I'm great. I'm great, considering, uh, you know, what things have been like the last year, but it's uh, really getting better now. Everybody's uh, out and about, and we see, uh, see our friends again and our families. Right. So I'm good. How about right. you? So now, I'm sure you're not a stranger to these Zoom meetings. I'm sure you've been booked solid for the past year, as this is the only <laughs> way of getting out there and communicating, being face-to-face. -face. Yeah. So how's that been going for you? Oh, it's been great. You know, I, um, uh, being an old fart, like I am, I'm not that up on technology and everything, <laughs> but, uh, so when my son started telling me a couple of years ago, you should do this zoom thing. I went, ah, that's too much for me and all of that, you know, but it's been great because like you said, you can uh, chat with people and, and see them, you know, uh, and even now that the COVID thing is mostly over, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be using this thing, uh, quite a bit in the future. Right. All right. Now, again, we're really excited um, to have you on. Uh, big fan of Thundercats as a kid, as, a, as I just mentioned. Um, how did you land the role of such an iconic character as Lionel from Thundercats? Tell us how that all started. Well, uh, like anything in my business, the, the business of voiceover acting, um, well, in, in acting in any, in any venue or area, you have to audition, you know. <clears throat> and the same was with, with Thundercats. I remember one day back in... 1984, I guess it was, because we started recording uh, Thundercast in 84. Didn't start on the year till 85. But my, my agent called me one day and he said, hey, I've got uh, an audition for you, let's say next Monday at two o'clock in the afternoon at such and such a place in, in Manhattan. And uh, so you, you know, you go there and um, <clears throat> we walked in and there's, uh, I walked in and there's like, you know, 50 other actors already there waiting to go. And uh, the, the walls were covered, as I recall, with, uh, with drawings of the characters and uh, the, the Thunder Tank and all the things about, wow. you know, about the show. And, and um, then they give you a synopsis about what the show is about because it was brand new. And then after you had a chance to look over the script and everything, they asked you which, um, uh, they wanted, you to re uh, wanted us to audition for uh, one Thundercat and one of the mutants, you know, Mumra's guys. Right. So I saw that, that Lionel was the, uh, you know, the top guy, the Lord of the Thundercats. And I said, I don't want to be him. <laughs> and, uh, and I liked the look of Jackal Man for some reason. So I, I read for Lionel and I, and I and I auditioned for Jackal Man and was very lucky to get both of them. But of course, you know, uh, there were only five of us in the cast. Uh, I think the second year they added one more. But uh, we, the, the five or six of us did all the voices for every, every character on every episode, 130 episodes. So you had to be able to do a lot of different voices. You know? Right. Uh, can you give us a line in uh, Lionel's voice? Anything you want to anything you can say in, <clears throat> sure. in his voice? Well, how about uh, Sword of Omens? Come to my hand. I, Lionel, command it. There you go. That's uh, one of the one most of... famous lines, right? Well, of course, the the one that's the most famous, I thought maybe you'd want to save till the end, but we can do it now if you want. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Thunder, 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 cats. Ho! That brought back so many memories just now. That was awesome. Now, yeah, voiceover, is that something that you always wanted to do or that's just something that came later on? Well, I started in radio uh, when I was a kid. I was 15 years old, started in radio. <clears throat> and, and I was a disc jockey on radio for from 1963 up until, uh, oh gosh, 80-something. And then I started doing, then I, then I did a... Um, um, uh, game show in New York, a TV game show in New York oh, wow. called Bowling for Dollars for three years. And then I started uh, working with Imus in the morning. You know, familiar right. with Imus in the morning? Yep. Uh, I, was with him for, I was with him for 35 years. Oh, wow. So <clears throat> I wasn't a disc jockey, but I, I was a member of the cast. I would do uh, uh, comedy routines and impressions of famous people and, and stuff like that. So it all kind of led, it, it all started when I was in radio and I was 15 years old. And even then I was doing little crazy voices. You know, my mom used to tell me that from the time I could talk, I was 
mimicking uh, cartoon characters and things yeah. like that, you know. And so when I started in radio, I just I, I just uh, kept it up and I, I, I kind of immersed that into my radio show. A little, you know, people would knock on the door and I'd say, come on in, in between records and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And then it finally led to, uh, to um, cartoon series and video games and all that kind of stuff. You started the career pretty young, 15 years old. That's uh, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Was that your first job? No, no. As a matter of fact, I had been a, a sports reporter, a newspaper reporter, for uh, about a year before that. When I was when I was a sophomore in high school, I was a, a newspaper reporter for our local newspaper a small town in Illinois, you know, it wasn't the New York Times, but uh, yeah. I, and they had me covering high school games, high school football games, basketball games, things like oh. that. Uh, and, and, and at that time, I thought this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I love that, you know. And then uh, one day came this chance to, uh, to audition for the radio station. And I said, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. And I was behind the microphone for two minutes and forget about the newspaper. I, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to, this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my right. life. Now, if this didn't happen the journalism and the voiceover could you see yourself doing anything else or like what did you have imagined you know after high school like was this the job that you always wanted well I started when I was a sophomore in high school so you know I, right, right then I knew what I wanted to do from then on I knew that's what I what I wanted to do um but I, I like I said I really I really liked the, the, the sports reporting thing too and I would have probably gone with that had the radio thing not not come okay. All right, now uh, off to some fun questions. Um, your favorite cartoon character? Well, who, do you, who would that be if you had to pick one? Uh, you mean ones that I do or? No, the, um, the, just all time. I grew up yeah. all time. Oh, gosh, that's a tough question because I loved cartoons when I was a kid, as I'm sure you did. Right. I still do. Uh, well, you're, you're still a kid. That's right. You're yeah. still a kid. Uh, I grew up with Mickey Mouse, you know, and, and, and the Warner Brothers uh, thing. Uh, um, and Daffy Duck and all the Disney stuff, you know. I think <clears throat> my favorite cartoon show when I was a kid, really, and the characters that I love the most were from Rocky and Bullwinkle. Have you had okay. a chance to see any of that? Yeah, yeah, of Can't course. Can't find it on TV anymore, probably on YouTube, but I loved Rocky and Bullwinkle. And as a matter of fact, there was a character on that show named Snidely Whiplash, and he was the ultimate villain. Had the were all black, a big top, a big black uh, stovepipe hat, had a mistache that went like this. Oh, you know? yeah. Yep. I don't and know you're talking about. Cape, you know, and he, his thing was, um, he was always after uh, Nell, the lovely young woman. And he goes, Hello, Nell. I'm going to tie you to the railroad track. <laughs> <laughs> when I walked in for the audition for Thundercats and I saw the picture of Jackal Man, something uh, in my mind snapped and said, This has got to be. Snidely Whiplash, because jackals are kind of, at least I always thought they were kind of uh, like wolves, kind of sneaky, you know, and, and backhanded and all that. So when I auditioned, did the audition, and then later on when I started actually doing the voice on the show, I always kind of channeled um, Snidely Whiplash, and that's where I kind of came up with that voice. Cool. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll share my favorite cartoon character, you, Dennis the Menace, the cartoon version yeah. of Dennis the Menace. Those yeah my favorite <laughs> really great yeah. i think everybody's got a favorite don't you i mean everybody has a favorite cartoon show and a, and a favorite character within that show that you just for some reason you kind of clicked on when you were a kid and kind of identified with i guess you, you remember that cartoon back in the late 80s the dennis the menace cartoons oh sure yeah sure i remember yeah. that and of course i remember the, the original television show dennis the right menace. yeah, yeah I, I used to be a big fan of that show too i think they used to watch yeah. the show on nickelodeon yeah so, well, I watched it when it was first on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, you know, here at Long Island Music Entertainment, like we talked about uh, before we yeah. started the interview, uh, <clears throat> we feature a lot of people from here on Long Island, but we're starting to, you know, broaden our, our list. And, you know, you're not far from here on Long Island. You're up in Connecticut, which is an hour yeah. away, but you're not yeah. a stranger to our area because we actually met a few times when you were a guest here at CradleCon, uh, the Comic Con that was put on by our good friends at the Cradle of Aviation Museum. How was that? Right. I, know, I think there were like two or three of them that you were here for. Maybe uh, two. I want to say two. I don't want to say three. I want to say maybe two. I, no, I think three so far. And I think I met you at the first one I was at. 
Right. And then, well, you're there. Pretty, you're there pretty much every year, aren't you? Because you yeah. live right on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I remember meeting you there. It's a great. I, it's a great Comic Con. A great okay. Comic Con. So tell us how your interaction was with you know the fans and the people from Long Island. How did you you know enjoy enjoy the three the three shows here? Oh, it's it's, it's great. It's run so well. You know, it's just, it's in the Cradle of Aviation uh, Museum, right. <clears throat> which is gorgeous places you know with the planes hanging in from the ceiling and the spacecraft you can walk around and even get in one of them and and all that so that makes it a great venue um and, and, but then the people are so nice out there you know and it, it is run so well um i really enjoy it nice all right so they treat you well and uh it's a good oh, weekend yeah. when you come down here what's that it, it's, a, it's always a good weekend when you come down here oh yeah well you know i being so close to home too i have a lot of friends out there Right. So it's a chance to, you know, you know, check in with them and maybe go out to dinner and stuff like that. One of my dearest friends of all is Alan Kagan, who is, um, I don't know his title there at the museum, but he's, uh, he, he runs a lot of it, you know, and he and his, uh, his wife, Sam, uh, there's so many people that I look forward to seeing when I go out there. Nice. I know you mentioned, you know, you like to go out to eat when you come here, the, uh, which ties into my next question. A lot of what we do here at Long Island Music and Entertainment, we like to uh, write about and talk about food. So what kind of food do you like? What kind of food is your favorite of all time? Oh, gosh, that's a tough question. I like so many different kinds of things. Yeah. I, I, like, I love Japanese food. <clears throat> and Alan and Sam took me to a great Japanese restaurant out there twice. And I can't remember the name of it now, but I like Japanese. You know, I mean, I, I like all kinds of things. I, I like, um, I like quote american food steaks and chops and things like that seafood whatever's I like pretty much you'll, you'll eat right hmm? well whatever whatever they put down in front of you you'll eat <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> what i like it's yeah. an old joke about I have, i'm on a seafood diet if i see it i eat it yeah you know? yeah you, you and me both you and me both <laughs> it's funny when people ask me what my favorite food is i always say fast i'm such a huge <laughs> i'm a fast food junkie especially taco bell so you know, cheap plug to Taco Bell right there. Taco Bell is my favorite. <laughs> I love it. So when you're not doing voiceovers and, you know, well, how do you pass the time? What do you like to do for fun? Oh, gosh, I like to play a little golf. Um, I love I love playing with my grandkids. That's my, it's always been, <clears throat> being around my family has always been my favorite thing to do. And when my kids were little and now they're all grown up, of course. And, uh, but I have grandchildren now to spoil. And that, that, uh, that's what I really love, being around the grandkids. Uh, do they, um, do your grandkids yeah. know what you did in the past, like with, with the characters and everything? Yeah, kind of, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, when, you're the, when you're the kid of somebody who's in show business in, any, in, in whatever way, uh, at least to my kids, and I've talked to other actors about it too, they're not impressed with you, you know. I mean, you, you can go out and sign a thousand autographs at a Comic-Con and people cheering you and applauding you and standing in line to wait to meet you, you know, and coming up and telling you, you know, you were the voice of my childhood, which I love to hear. And it, But when you go home, you're just dad, you know. Yeah. Take the garbage out, dad. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they're all very, I, 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 my kids are very proud of me. I, I will say that. And I, I, I'm not trying to say that they're not, but it's, you know, um, when you, you know, it's just, you're their dad, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when, when my kids were little, um, and now a little bit with my grandchildren, uh, I, lo I love to read to them, you know. And I would first, I would start out reading a book, and I would say, and so the evil witch came, and she said, we're going to get you. <laughs> my kids would say, dad, just read it. <laughs> don't do the little voices <laughs> that's funny. and everybody else that's what they love me for you know but that's it's, it's beautiful because I, i'm just dad to them and that's the way i wanted to be okay you know i don't want my kids to think of me as some kind of a celebrity or something like that all right now we're coming towards the end but um if you could have any superhero power what would you be or what would you have <sighs> tough question yeah, i'm sorry i'm super all these tough questions i I wanted, no, to that's okay. I wanted to have some fun with, uh, you know, a voice from, from my past. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess, I, I mean, I've got to say Lionel is my favorite superhero. Um, uh, what's his superpower? Well, pretty much the sword. So <laughs> it's not his own power. But uh, I don't know. I've always thought it'd be 
I think everybody thinks this, what if you could fly, right. you know? Yeah. Now, I, I don't mean in terms of flying to, you know, to attack somebody or something like that. Just what if, you, if humans could fly? You know, we've always, always wondered that. Or, or have, I remember when I was a kid, I thought it was, I was nuts about Superman, like we, we all were in my generation. And to have that x-ray vision, you know, that would be so cool to be able to see through walls and see through buildings, leap tall buildings in a single bound and stuff like that. So, right. um, so anything new or future plans for Larry Kenny? Well, in, in more Comic Cons coming up. In terms of work, um, I'm working on Teen Titans Go now. It's a, com a comics, uh, it's, a, it's a cartoon show on um, Comedy Central, not Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've done several voices for that. Um, I'm still doing commercials. You know, I've been the voice of Count Chocular for 40 years and Sonny the Cocoa Puffs Bird. Um, next week, I'm doing a new commercial for uh, Skittles, you know, the candy. Yeah, I've been, awesome. I've been doing their commercials for over 20 years. I'm the guy at the end of every one of them that says, you know, like, feel the rainbow, or, taste the rainbow. Wow, wow. I, okay. I just learned something That's new. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Other than that, because in this business, you know, you don't really know what's coming up six months from now or, or whatever. In this business, you get a call from your agent to go audition for a commercial, let's say tomorrow. And then they're, they're going to be shooting that commercial within two or three days. So uh, that's all the warning you have. If you get the commercial, you go do it two or three days from now and then wait for the next one, you know. So I can't really tell you, you know, any what's coming up. Hopefully something will pop up. It usually does. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So we've come to the last part of the interview where we like to call yeah. the limelight. So the limelight is a chance where you can go ahead and plug websites, your social media, so people could jump mm -hmm. on and, and follow you. Uh, mm -hmm. The Limelight is actually sponsored by some good friends of ours at the Wrestling POV podcast. If you uh, or if anybody watching this interview is a huge professional wrestling fan, you should definitely check out Wrestling POV. They are the uh, the best in in the business. <clears throat> wrestling POV, as you know, they've been also good friends of ours. So we thank Wrestling POV uh, for uh, sponsoring the Limelight. So Larry Kenny, go ahead. You are in the limelight. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm really, I'm on Facebook, of course, uh, and I'm, I'm on Instagram, but I don't really know how to work it that well, <laughs> like I told you. You know, I'm an old guy, and I don't, I don't know a lot of that uh, new technology, but um, yeah, a face, I'm on Facebook, and, and uh, I post everything I'm going to be doing on that, so you kind of follow that, see where I'm going to be. Uh, once again, we have Larry Kenny, voiceover of lion -O, Count Chocula, Sonny the Cuckoo Bird, and what we just learned, he is the voice that you hear at the end of the Skittles commercial, which now I'm so excited over. So Larry, <laughs> Kenny, thanks so much for joining us here at Long Island Music and Entertainment. This was so exciting for us to have you on and uh, thank you for your time. My pleasure, Todd. Thank you very much.